I'm Sarah Schneider, and I am the producer and host of KMFA's Ancient Voices. Early Ancient music Voices. Woohoo! Wonderful. When can we ever listen to that if we were so inclined? You, if you are in Central Texas, you can listen to it Sunday mornings at ten, or anywhere in the world, including Central Texas, online on demand. KMFA.org. Awesome. Well, today we are going to talk about an encounter between two major composers of the German Baroque period, Dietrich Buxtehude and a fanboy of his, <laughs> Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, I think a lot of people know who Bach uh, was, and if they don't, they have Google. But for the sake of those who are not total German Baroque aficionados, who was Dietrich Buxtehude? He was um, an organist of Danish extraction. Mm. Sadly, we don't know quite where or when he was born with any precision. I know baptismal records going but, missing and all that stuff, but man. we think 1637, perhaps in Denmark. Then after he gigged in Denmark for a while, he moved to Lübeck, a very important merchant town. And so there was lots of money and what they liked to do was to build ginormous churches and fantabulous organs and then hire the very best organist that they could find. Mm. And this was, you know, to the glory of God, obviously, but also a little bit to the glory of Lübeck and the merchants. So I'm assuming that Buxtehude was like the cat's meow of organists and Absolutely. composers. This was like the plum position of that time in that place. So yeah, he really was, he was a star. When and how did Bach and Buxtehude meet? They met in 1705 when Bach made his rather famous foot journey from Arnstadt to Lübeck. Wait, how long is that? I think it's like 250 miles. Goodness. Yes. On foot. On foot. Wow. Um, That's he dedication, y'all. taken a, a post mm. um, for here and there, but the, the legend goes that he went the majority of the distance on foot. Wow. He already had a post as organist at the new church in Arnstadt, but still, I mean, he was a major newbie. Do you think that Bach was kind of like a stalker or just that guest who doesn't know when to leave or what? Actually, I kind of think, so we do know that Bach overstayed his, not his welcome, but he told the church council in Arnstadt that he was going to be gone four weeks. Mm -hmm. He stayed almost four months. But what I think happened was Buxtehude, saw this very talented, very eager young man on his doorstep. And it just so happened that Bach's visit coincided with the musical event of the year in Lübeck, which was Buxtehude's Abendmusiken. Now these were huge scale concerts, you know, he- Evening concerts, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Brought in all the talent from Lübeck and probably Hamburg as well. And so I just picture Buxtehude asking Bach, okay, you're an organist, what else do you play? Bach mm -hmm. said violin, Buxtehude said, you're with me. Oh my gosh! I, I'm almost positive he put him to work in the Abend Musik. And wow, so this is like Lollapalooza, and he just happened to show up right before that took place. Do you think that it was premeditated on Bach's part? I think he did that with... Clever man. Yes. <laughs> How did Buxtehude end up getting rid of Bach as his house guest? I mean, was it like, get off my couch, shoo! Do we know how he ended up saying, you need to run on now? I honestly think Bach was getting like red flag signals from back in Arnstadt because his cousin stepped in for him as replacement organist while he was gone. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't have any letters or anything, but I can imagine this cousin like issuing a series of gradually more worrisome letters. Um, Sebastian, when are you coming back? They're getting mad mm -hmm. at me, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. When Bach got back to Arnstadt, he was called up on the carpet by the church council who wanted to know where he had been for so long. Oh man. And that's when he said, I went to Lübeck to learn one thing or another about my art. Wow. And furthermore, the church council reprimanded him for introducing so many strange tones into the organ prelude that the congregation had been confused by it. A major role of the organist in the Lutheran service was to play a prelude before the hymns, alerting the congregation to which hymn was coming up. Mm -hmm. However, at a certain point, boards were installed in the church in Lübeck because Buxtehude's preludes were so avant-garde and ornamented 
that no one knew which hymn was coming up. Oh boy. And so this is what Bach picked up while he was in Lübeck. Thank you so much, Sarah. We really, really, really appreciate you My taking pleasure. the time to talk to us. Is there anything you would like to tell our listening and watching audience before we go away? It's always fascinated me to learn which composers, the composers we consider geniuses, you know, who their inspirations were. I mean, that Bach was inspired by Vivaldi, for example, but to know that Bach had so much admiration for this currently rather unknown composer, I think is fascinating and, you know, it, it tells us something. So get out there and listen to some Buxtehude.